it's Amber, and today I'm coming back to you all with another sculpting video. I know it's been a bit, I haven't sculpted it since January when I did the unicorn, but you know, I really want to sculpt, and I've been ha having this little dog kind of just sitting around. If you guys don't remember, I received this as a gift from a friend of mine who, like, uh, back in March or something like that, I can't remember, <laughs> but I've decided what I'm going to do with it, and that is turn it into a Cer into Cerberus. Um, for those of you who don't know, that is Hades, the god of deaths, the Greek god of the underworld, the underworld's dog, like guard dog. I figure it could be fun, and I honestly think, I think it'd be a nice um, boost to this little guy, so why don't we get to it? So starting right off the bat, the first thing I want to show you guys is my little thought process here. I already know he's going to be a three-headed dog, so Cerberus, um, and I kind of want to give him some little things. I know he's going to be like a Rottweiler, which is pretty typical. Not quite entirely sure what I'm doing, but I've got ideas. I want him to be both cute, but kind of dark all at the same time. Um, he is ceramic. So the first thing I had to do is take off this little bow ribbon he's got on him. You don't want that. That's too... no. <laughs> so he's ceramic, so I'm going to be using polymer clay. I'm going to start off by using some of my old uh, polymer clay and then my, like, and this is Sculpey polymer clay, so it's baking clay. I'm going to start off by using what I already have, and then I'm going to take this big bad boy right here and add some more little details and whatnot but we'll see how that all goes so the first thing I'm doing is just taking some tin foil or aluminum foil uh, and I'm just going to try and make two nice sized balls that will fit his head so they're about the same size as what he already has for a head when I get nice, nice size. That way I don't have to use all of my clay up. I find, I've heard that this is some of the best things to do if you don't want to use everything. I think that one will do. Alright, so I need to get another one. Those are both roughly the same size. Just want to make sure I can find a good spot for them. I think that'll work. So next thing I'm going to do is take some of my bacon bond and I'm just gonna um, put that on here exactly where I want it. There isn't a lot of things I have to do with this so and this stuff will make it so that when the time comes it'll all bake in there which will be nice. I mean I should I could have just done um, one head at a time and that would have probably been easier. Maybe what I have to do. Yeah, oh, yeah, that might be what I have to do. Okay, so we're just gonna wait. <laughs> Obviously, that's not working right now. We really can't get that to work on there right now. Apparently not. I'll just start with this one then. And like before, I'm just gonna take this, like I did in my other sculpting video, and I'm just gonna knead it. I'm not gonna show the whole process of it. Ah, oh, dang it. So after kneading my clay, I'm just going to take a little rolling pin that I have here and I'm going to flatten this out so that I can hopefully cover one head at least. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, maybe I can make enough for two. So I'm going to do that and then I'll show you what, it looks, what I do afterwards. Now that my clay is thin enough, I'm going to just grab w one of these balls that I have here for a head and I'm going to just go over it as well like as I can. Oh. Now I'm just taking my thumb and I'm smoothing out these edges just a little bit so that they come on here nicely and it all latches on. It's okay that it doesn't look perfect, because we're going to build it up later. 
Also, big thanks to my dad for um, getting me a bunch of art supplies, like um, sculpting tools for my birthday back in March because now I can uh, actually use proper tools. Um, whether I use them properly or not is a whole nother thing, but I have them. So, I mean, that's something because I am totally not like a sculpture artist. I just am doing this for fun and because I want to. <laughs> Now, if you watched my other video, you'll know that you don't necessarily need a ton of tools to do a sculpture. I just really want to try out all my new tools now that I have them, so... Now, it just sort of looks like he has a growth on his head, on the side of his body. So, um, let's give him another one, shall we? This is really good clay. It's really smooth and everything. Okay. Now that he's got two little lumps, I think we can say we've got his heads somewhat ready. Um, hopefully they'll stay there. Uh, the only other thing I have to do, which will be at a later time, I think, like I said, it is kind of late, is start actually sculpting on them. But I have good basis, which is what I wanted today. So, yeah, we'll see when I come back to this next time what I do. Alright, um, looks like these are doing well on here. Thank goodness. They're still a little loose, but that's okay. Because the next thing I want to do is take some of this sculpting amateur wire. And I'm going to cut it and bend it. Because I want to make some ears on these guys, on this guy's head. So, or guys' heads, I, I don't know if I, uh, well, you know what I mean. I want to just make some ears. It's my first time using amateur wire, so not quite sure how to do this. But that's okay, we're all going to learn together, I guess. Oi. Oh, I'm already getting this thing tangled up. <laughs> uh, this is my life. I need to make sure these are big enough ears, though. That's a small ear. Let's make sure that's bigger, I suppose. Line about the same. That should be about the same. Yep. That'll be an ear. Now I'm going to take my wire cutter. This is my first time using these wire cutters, so that'll be fun. Alright, there's one ear. He, we're doing something, I think. <laughs> Stuff that bends real easily, which is nice. Yeah, oh, I like that already. That's cute. Oh, we're already getting somewhere. Yay! Getting ears. Next thing will be the hard part, where is we have to. Because I want some of these ears to stay up, and so this will help keep that. Hardest part is making sure they stay up. Um, I can only hope. <laughs> The wire is supposed to help with that, but we'll see. Okay, now the hard one. I gotta hope the head stays attached too. When I think about it, I probably should have done the wire when I was doing the um, tin foil, but hey, you live and you learn. We're gonna do another little floppy ear. About the same size again. Right about there. somewhere. One more. One more ear to do. There we go. Now we got ears. Well, sort of. Progress is progress and that's, that's all I want to see <laughs> today. So I 
can already kind of see their heads forming. Okay, um, it's a different day. Uh, we're going to finish covering these ears. Hopefully they'll stay attached. All right, I got another flat piece like this. And um, first thing we're gonna do is try and attach it to uh, an ear. Yeah, uh, can only hope everything will stay together. Yeah, I'm just praying to the whatever deity that will help me with this. So like sculpting gods, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> I need help with this thing because I don't know what I'm doing. That's for sure. <clears throat> I don't want this so super thick. Now I have not baked this, so it's all still malleable, which is, I think, both a good thing and a bad thing all at once. This could end very well or very bad depending on the situation and I've done my best to sort of make this rather thin but also thick enough that it can stay attached. I need to cut off some of these ears so we'll just take a pair of scissors and we'll just cut a bit around here. Not the most ideal way to do it but it works. <coughs> So I'm just gonna sort of pinch this around here at the ends. So hopefully, the problem about having nails with this is it's gonna leave a little bit of marks, but I think I can eventually smooth that out. I'm not so concerned about the bottoms, just in case I'm gonna... I am very scared for this when I eventually do put it in the stove because I fear what may happen because glue can only do so much so i don't know what's going to happen i don't know if this is going to stay or not i i fear this may be the one where i have some pieces sort of uh fall apart on me but we'll see look at that that's not a bad ear so long as i don't really look down below <laughs> but so far i mean that's kind of cool it's a cool little ear it's about what i want it so yay i'm happy so far Alright, so now that I have the ears all done and everything, and I've actually went and I've given this one a little bit more of a neck, I'm going to try and add the muzzle, so I'm not quite sure how to do this, so the only way I can see doing this is taking a ball of clay and slicing it in half, or something like that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take it, slice it in half, make it a little smaller enough that it's gonna fit on the face. It might not be as big as its buddies. Maybe I should have left it a little bigger when I think about it. Yeah, never mind. I'm figuring this out. It's a learning curve. I want this to be about the same size as the other dog's face, so the main dog's face. I think this might work. I was worried this was gonna be too big, but it might actually be the right size. So I'm just gonna smoosh this onto here. We'll see how that works. Probably would have been the better idea is just making the faces beforehand and then attaching these heads. But you know, you live and you learn. Um, like I said, this whole thing is just a learning process for me. I've never done any 
I've only sculpted one other thing, so, well, not true. I've sculpted a little bit. Um, I did take a, one class where I made a pot, and when I was little, we used to have a little bit of clay working in school, but other than that, I'm not, I'm not a professional is what I'm trying to say. I think that looks like a dog nose, so far. I'm trying to open this mouth just a tiny bit. Enough that I can sort of stick a tongue in there. So for that I'm going to need some wire so I can get a tongue going. Just need a little bit. Just jam this wire right into its mouth. Like that. I'm gonna just make the, just need one little thing like this. Right. I got a tiny little piece here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did with the ear. So that's the goal. So the next thing I want to do is just take a little ballpoint tool and then I'm going to go here and I'm just going to think that will work. Hopefully that will stay attached. I have no clue like everything else. This is all trial and error. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if you guys remember this, I got a bunch of these um, in those dinosaur packs that my husband and I opened. So I'm just going to take the end here and kind of make a indentation where I believe the eyes are. The eyes on, the, on this dog are fairly large, which works because I like large eyes anyways. It's gonna have one that's slightly covered which is okay. But that's just because of the ear. His face is just a little wonky but again I am learning. I've never sculpted a dog before but I think you know it looks like a dog so that that's exactly what I want to go for. Even if it looks like a, somewhat of an abomination as long as it looks like a like you can tell it's a dog I'm okay with it. Even if it looks like a dog that's just going <laughs> through cancer treatment I don't care. <laughs> Because so far, yeah, that is exactly what it's looking like, is a dog going through cancer. <laughs> dog experiencing horrible growths. I like that face, kind of. I think that'll be cute once I actually put in more of the details and stuff. So, before I start working on this other dog, I don't know if you noticed, I, there has an ear here, but it's not really showing as much as I would like. So I'm going to like just bulk that ear up a little bit um, with some clay. I might have to do the same with the other one, but we're just going to do it with this one for now. Just so that they're even enough. There. Now you can see it's got another... You can see its ear. So I'm going to try something just a little different with my camera angle right now. Since a pen needs a charge, but I also want to finish up this nose. one of those things. Maybe I should have done this before adding ears, but can we do? What's done is done. Oh no, it's coming off. Not what we want to do. Don't, no, don't coming off. No, 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 no. Stay attached. Come on. Be a good boy. Stay attached. Don't fall apart on me now. This is the head that gives me troubles, so uh, we'll see how it goes. There he wants to come apart. Trying to go in there, something to keep everything attached. And oh no, it's it's already trying to collapse on me. Mm -mm. Nope, stay stay together, stay together, please, please just stay together. <laughs> Nothing wants to stay together. This is oh no, this is a disaster area. I'm probably going to add another ear on this one, just like the other one. Maybe. I think I might at least try. I don't know. 
Alright, I need to somehow get this face because it's really, like, off. Oi, that ear still bugs me, but what can I do? This is going to be the derp, uh, the derpy, uh, head. Yeah, this is going to, this is nightmare fuel already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> try and press this face in just a little more. So I don't want it that big. Um, this is definitely the derpy, 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 derpy head. It's not going to look exactly like my sketch, but that's okay. We're at least trying. I hate the whole thing. Oh boy, this is a nightmare. You know, I think cutting it was better. I wanted to see how this would look if I did it this way, but I think putting indents in it was much better. This one's gonna have a bone in its mouth. That's the goal, anyways. So we're gonna do the same thing we did last time. We're do the same thing we did with the tongue, and we're gonna just sort of. Uh, well, I think before I add that, though, I wanna add the uh, eyes like before. Yeah, this is the dog that needs help. This is your um. See, this isn't gonna be like normal servers. I think this is one of those dogs. I think this is the type of three-headed dog that is a rescue, and, um, you know, it's a special needs dog, which, you know, that's great. They need love, too. They all do. Special needs dogs need just as much love as normal dogs. Maybe just a little bit more. Um, and this is definitely one of those special need dogs, obviously. Hoi. <laughs> Takes a lot for this dog. Whew. He is the derp. Okay, so I want him to have a bone in his mouth. So I'm just gonna stick this right through here, like so, because he's getting a nice little bone. Yep, this, this is one of those dogs that just needs a little bit of help. <laughs> but he's got a cute little bone, so that's nice. Um, yeah. Like I said, I'll probably add another ear here just to, like, add on to that ear just to make it pop out a little more. This is deadly interesting. This is going to be interesting. We'll see how it looks after everything's been done. But, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, this dog definitely has a bone on him, so that's good. Now I'm going to just adjust this ear here. Oh, that's cute now. It's got like big ears. You can see its other heads, its other derpy heads. I'm going to take some baby oil in the hopes of making this a little smoother. Um, we'll see how that goes. Let me find a tissue. I've seen people do this like Ace of Clay, if I remember correctly, has done this. Let's we'll see what happens. So this is my first time trying out the baby oil technique, and apparently this is supposed to help with a lot of stuff, um, like getting rid of fingernails and smoothing, but um, at least I'm correct, it's what it's supposed to do, fingerprints and stuff, so I'm gonna just do this, and I just have some Equate Baby Oil, so I'm not quite sure if it's gonna work or not, it's doing something, I'll come back after I've done that then. Alright. Now that we got this thing all oiled, 
Um, I'm just gonna say, yeah, uh, yeah, baby oil does work fairly well. There's almost no fingerprints, at least visible ones, like some of the more prominent fingerprints have almost disappeared entirely. So that's pretty cool. One thing is though, my hands are all ugh, covered in baby oil, so that's something. But now that we got this baby oiled, let's stick this pup in the stove, shall we? Oven's ready. Little puppies here. Right, it's time to bake them. Don't be a disappointment to me. Please stay alive. Do not fall apart on me. Oh boy. Live. Live. Why have you forsaken me? There's already cracks happening, and it's the head. It's the one I knew it would be. Oh, it's the derpy one. So I'm going to have to do some quick fixes on that. Uh, don't know how, but I'll figure it out. Uh, but we'll do that later, seeing as my camera is ready to die at any time. We got like cracks coming in here, here, and here. All throughout the ears. Oh boy. Oh boy. This isn't good. Oh no. It's completely collapsing on the ones. I, uh, I was worried about this. But you know what? Trial and error. It's okay. We'll fix you up, buddy. And then we'll make you into a monster. So, unfortunately for my little buddy here, his derpy head is falling off. Um, he's lost an ear, so I'm going to have to repair that, which actually gives me an excuse to put it in a better spot. Might move it over here a little bit and just repair this whole spot. I've already tried. I'm going to uh, try in that bacon thing. If the baking, I'm going to try and fix this with the baking clay. If not, and if that does not work, and it starts cracking more and breaking a little more. I'm gonna come in with some epoxy sculpt to sort of fix all this if it continues to be a hassle for me. So yeah, um, I'm gonna fix this up real quick uh, just with the other clay and then we'll come back after I've baked that. So I've fixed up what I can back here. I'm gonna stick her back in the oven and see what happens to them. Like I said, if this doesn't work out, breaking out the epoxy sculpt so let's see I hope it works I don't want to have to break out more clay than it's already on here so otherwise I feel we're just gonna get into some iffy territory alright so I just got this little boy straight like fresh out of the oven I think going in for that second uh, baking really helped I fixed all those cracks that were happening uh, unfortunately I forgot to use the baby oil so it's gonna be a little rough but that's okay I might sand it uh, after it's cooled down a little more but I want to be careful on that I did put this piece of tin foil in that I'm gonna take out now um, kind of roughed up the head just a little but that's okay uh, and that helped to keep this staying up so that's good yeah everything's a little more solidified uh, so that's good. No real cracking or any kind. So I think the next thing I might sand this. Not sure. I do know the next thing is to spray paint it. Um, but I want to get some other items done and made first and or bought. So we'll figure it out from here on out. So recently my husband got me this um, uh, Lazy Susan. It's sort of Lazy Susan. It came with like a top and a bottom, but I don't like this. It's like a spice rack sort of thing. I don't like it. I like, I just wanted the bottom. But my husband gave me this brilliant idea to use the top part since I don't like how this is structured because it's kind of hard to see, but these don't go in very well I was lucky to get those and it keeps splintering on the ends with the wood and I don't want to really mess with it so my husband made a suggestion to 
make this the base for my Cerberus sculpture. And my thought is I'm going to put Cerberus right here. I'm going to turn these little sticks into pillars. I've also got these little skull beads. Bought a pack of these at Joann's and I just lost one. <laughs> got it back. <laughs> So, like I said, this is going to be Cerberus's base. It's a lot bigger than I had anticipated to go with, but you know what? Work with what you got. Because it's, So the plan is because this is wood. I don't want to risk putting this in the oven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some epoxy sculpt. It's a two-part mixture my dad got for me uh, on my birthday back in March. I just haven't had a chance to use it. because. But I figure this being wood and... Not, and I don't want to risk setting a fire in my oven. I just use the epoxy sculpt and do everything. So I'm going to, make, like I said, make these into columns with the epoxy sculpt. And I'm also going to take some old tin foil. Uh, just some tin foil. It hasn't really been used, but it's been crumpled. And I'm going to put it along the bottom. Glue it along the bottom of this base in the hopes of making some sort of texture so yeah let's see how that goes so i guess i kind of stopped talking at this point uh sorry about that so i'm gonna just tell you guys what i did here to start out with i just started tearing some of this tin foil aluminum foil whatever it is and just sort of figured out where i want to place it tearing little bits here and there big chunks off whatnot want the whole bottom covered and then I took some wood glue because that's all I had at the time and still primarily all I have and I just sort of put it all over there in an attempt to cover as much of the base as possible so that I could get as much of this tin foil on there um, I added more glue where it was necessary but yeah that was about it for when it came to the aluminum foil After getting the aluminum foil all placed down, I next went in and opened my epoxy sculpt. I took out uh, a little bit of equal amounts from both parts because with the epoxy sculpt you need to have uh, equal parts of both, but you want to be careful not to mix your hands in between the two of them. It's really difficult, but it it wasn't too hard to work with otherwise. Also, side note, I did. there's a reason I'm wearing gloves here, and that's because it's pretty toxic to touch the stuff without gloves for quite some time. Um, I didn't wear a mask, and I don't know if I should have, but yeah. Uh, warning is to wear gloves whenever using this stuff. I did my best to flatten this uh, little piece that I had made so that I could wrap it around the wood st wooden sticks and everything. And then I just sort of went and moved it as easily as I could. This is a little bit of a struggle. I wanted to try and make pillars. And at least one of the pillars was going to be laying flat. And that's what this one was. So one thing I had read was that you could use water to sort of smooth things down a little bit. Make it a little more malleable. And that's something that I did here. And then afterwards I sort of... Just took a random tool. I have no idea what it is, what you're entirely supposed to do with it, and I just went in and made some line work here, just to sort of make some indents for it to look more like a pillar. Granted, none of my pillars are entirely perfect, and that's okay. Again, like I said, I'm just trying and learning. And to be honest, I wanted this whole like base and like background that. Cerberus is in to just sort of look kind of decrepit. That's why there's a bunch of, that's why there's a fallen pillar. Like he tore it down and you know, they're all sort of just like, how do I explain it? They're, you know, they're worn and everything. Nothing's perfect here. It's, it's the underworld. What do you expect? Things are falling apart and people are dead. That's how it's going to be and that's, that's how they like it. Nothing's stable in the underworld. At least not in my mind. <laughs> Uh, 
After finishing the first pillar, I then went in to work on the second, both these standing pillars in the background. And very much it was the same way. Um, yeah, just I had to do my best to smooth it, and the only way to do that was go up and down on it. It was not fun necessarily. I mean, it was relaxing. Something about making this base was just relaxing. I guess sort of just let my mind go on it, and I think that's why I didn't talk too much. I just sort of got into it. It was very relaxing in many ways. I think the weirdest part was having to go up and down on the pillars, though. That was a little weird. And just gross feeling. Ugh. Just because it's so slimy. Even with the gloves, it was so slimy. And it's like, you have to go up and down. It kept making this squishy noise, like... <laughs> and, oh, it was bad. It, it was horrible. I did not like it. <laughs> also, I hope you like my sound effects. Yeah, other than just working with the water part and make, having to smooth it down and, you know, the squishy and sound, the, like, wet sound effect of it, it was okay. I, it was a pretty good experience, and I look forward to working with my epoxy again in the future on some other things. I have no idea what entirely yet. I do have some possible ideas, but I just don't know what to do yet. I just gotta also do it is the other problem. <laughs> My head got in the way of the camera a number of times as well, just because I had to look very closely for some of those lines in order to get the little edges and whatnot to look decent enough. After finishing the pillars, I then decided to play Cerberus and glue him to the base. I, I'm glad I did this, but I'm also kind of like, you'll, you'll see when I do have part two of this video come out, why I'm a little... I like that I glued him on there because it made it easier to spray paint and everything, but it was kind of also difficult with the fact that he was there to actually paint it at the same time. After waiting 24 hours for the epoxy sculpt to dry, I then started adding in the skull beads. And in order to do this, I just sort of placed a bunch of glue down. I placed a bunch of beads down, and then I put glue all over top of it. There could have been an easier way to do this, but this was the best way I found. And I just sort of kept piling the skulls up uh, around the sides, because I just liked the idea of just a ton of skulls just on the ground next to him like these are all the dead you know and I just kept putting glue over each pile uh, like every time I piled it and then they wouldn't stay anymore they didn't stick as much I just would keep going glue beads glue beads until I felt content um, I just went to a point where it's like I wanted them like big piles but not too big I didn't want them as tall as Cerberus so I just found a nice little medium ground. And then I placed a bunch of random ones here and there, everywhere, until I felt like there was enough s skulls lying around. I think I did find a happy medium with those skulls, though, so, yeah. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I hope you'll join me next week when I show you guys part two of making Cerberus statue, where I actually start painting it, and even adding a few extra details and finalizing it in the end. Should be interesting and fun. In the meantime, you can check out some of my other videos, they'll pop up. And see y'all next time. Bye!